name. As a boy, he always knew a sailor he would be, so he studied the law of the sea. Captain of his crew, a brave and vicious man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sun and sky and his heart would be his guide, a man of valor and pride. The king and queen, their blessings he obtained to carry the flag of Spain. And rain, a strong, courageous man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sails raised high, he searched the great unknown, his quest for adventure, dispelling any fear. A sure, courageous man, Columbus it was he, who sailed to new horizons across the great blue. When that's Harana. done, we'll... If our return voyage to Spain is as smooth as our westward crossing, then I can assure you I will return with reinforcements in good time, Harana. And you, in the meantime, will take charge of the Fort of Navidad in my place. You're in command, Harana. I understand, Admiral. And as Chief Guard appointed by their majesties, the King and Queen, I promise to fulfill my duties to the very best of my ability. And you, Gutierrez, and you also, Escobedo, I'm entrusting you in my absence with the safeguarding of these newly claimed lands. Don't fail me. I trust that there will be no mistakes. Have faith, Admiral. When you next set foot on this island, you will see all these barrels filled to overflowing with gold. And that's a promise, sir. Admiral, I implore you to impress upon their majesties just how much we've managed to accomplish here. Mm-hmm. Well, I hate to admit it, but I've developed a soft spot for the Admiral. I'll miss you, my friend, but I've decided to go with him on this voyage. <laughs> I think you're crazy, but I'm sure you'll return, and when you do, there'll be a barrel of gold waiting for you. You'll see. Admiral! Huh? We've just had news of Captain Pinzon. Really? <laughs> Tell me, Torres, what is it? Well, apparently, one of Guacanagari's subjects saw the Pinta leave an inlet to the east. I believe it was two days ago. Perhaps he set sail for Spain, hoping that if he arrives there before we do, he can claim the discovery of Chipango for himself. Sounds like Pinzon to me. <laughs> yes, and if we want to catch him, we must leave as soon as possible. <laughs> On January the 4th, 1493, we departed from the island of Hispaniola. Admiral. Huh? I must express my opinion of this matter of Captain Pinzon. For 40 days since November 21st of last year, he's been acting entirely of his own volition. I believe this is a major infringement of protocol and that it must be severely dealt with. I understand you, Sanchez, but Martin must have a chance to explain himself. Good news, Admiral Columbus. We've spotted the Pinta. Where huh? is she? There she is. Off the starboard bow. And I'd say she's headed straight for us, Senor Sanchez. So they're not running away. We'll hold a steady course. Vincente, send out a boat and inform Captain Pinzon we desire him to come aboard. Excellent, Admiral. I'm anxious to know that my brother is safe.
Admiral, uh, I've just heard that the Santa Maria has been wrecked on a reef. Is this true? You've got a nerve talking about reefs? What have you got to say for yourself for willfully disobeying orders? Nothing, because no orders were disobeyed, willfully or unwillfully. What does that mean? The Pinta II was a victim of mischance. The current was strong, as you know. Our anchor cable broke, we were pulled away by the current, and dry as we might, we could not turn back. A very convincing explanation, Martin. Huh? But it still puzzles me as to how you managed to find all that gold. Huh? Oh, this? Why, this is nothing, Admiral. These are only baubles. My men have much more than this, as you'll see. Glad to hear it. But I still demand to know how you justify disobeying orders and acting on your own as you did. I heartily regret that things turned out the way they did, but you must understand one thing. I certainly was not acting in my own interests for my own profit. It was essential that we find gold in order to fulfill our promise to the king and queen. And I promised my men as well that I would send each and every one of them home with untold wealth. How could I let them down after all they've done for me? And finally, I believe that finding gold would ensure the success of our enterprise, Admiral. It was wise of you to make up such noble-sounding excuses, Martin. You've almost convinced me. We shall explain it thus in Spain. But from now on, you are under my command. Under no circumstances will you take any independent action. I charted a course northeast by east until we encountered the trade winds that would blow us quickly home to Europe. By my calculations, we were on the same latitude as the Portuguese islands of the Azores. Huh? There's a storm on the way. Huh? How can you say that? I've never seen the western sky look so lovely. Wow, you were right, sir. Of course. Lightning in the western sky can only mean one thing, bad weather. It's a storm warning that never fails. Men, all hands, prepare for a storm! Keep the stern light burning so she can still see us. When the storm's over, we'll find her. Pray that we all survive. Help, somebody! What? Admiral, there's water in the hole. Then get down there and start bailing. Aye, aye. If we manage to prevent the Nina from sinking, it will be thanks to the mercy of the Blessed Virgin. And in the event of our safe return, one of us must make a pilgrimage to the Church of Our Lady in Guadalupe. We shall draw lots for the honor. He who takes the chickpea marked with the cross will be the one chosen to make this difficult pilgrimage. Here it is.
It appears that Our Lady has bestowed this difficult honor on me. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure this is a sign she will guide us through the storm. My greatest concern was should we all sink to the bottom of the sea, all record of my expedition would be lost. And so I made two sets of records. I sealed them tightly with wax and packed them into two barrels. I threw one of the barrels into the sea and lashed the other one to the quarterdeck so that should the Nina be destroyed, it would still float amongst the wreckage. And thus, even if we should all perish in the storm, the records of my voyage would be preserved for future generations. Yet I knew that the odds of them reaching anyone unharmed were even less than those of finding Chipango in the midst of a boundless ocean. seen high winds like these. Not a single ship has been able to dock or leave from this harbor for a whole month now. Huh? Ah, oh, take a look at that, will you? Huh? Well, I'll be jiggered. Looks like a ghost ship. Captain Diaz, a suspicious-looking ship has just entered the harbor. What? In this ghastly weather? Yes, and she's damaged. Looks like a Spanish ship to me. Spanish? In that case, we had better have a closer look. Prepare a boat immediately. Right away. Tell me, where is your captain? Huh? If it isn't Christopher Columbus. It's Captain Diaz, I believe. Indeed, Bartholomew Diaz, now serving as defense chief of this harbor, Captain. And what business would the defense chief have with me? Columbus. I am duty-bound to examine all Spanish ships that enter this harbor. I'm sorry, but you must come with me immediately to the financial commissioner. No, Diaz, I refuse. I have been appointed admiral by the king and queen of Spain. There is no reason I should have to undergo such a process. Did you say admiral? Since when did you become an admiral? This document was given to me personally by the Spanish monarchy, sir. Read it. You are appointed Admiral of the Ocean Sea and Governor General of any new islands or continents you may discover. So you're telling the truth. Mm-hmm. I have a letter here that I've just finished writing to King John, your Portuguese sovereign. Perhaps you'll have it delivered for me. The king is presently at the Santa Maria de Bertodas Monastery. I shall make certain that he receives your letter. I'm sure he will be glad to welcome you, Admiral.
Your Royal Highness, I beg you to forgive us for docking in Lisbon, but we had no choice in the matter. The extremely inclement weather forced us to take emergency measures. Fetch a chair for the Admiral. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, be seated, Admiral. I have learned much about your voyage from reading your letter. Tell me, is it really true that you managed to reach Chipangu by sailing west, Admiral? Absolutely. The plan which I submitted to your highness ten years ago has finally been realized thanks to the gracious efforts of their majesties the King and Queen of Spain. Mm. What nerve! <gasps> Such appalling arrogance! I'd hang him! You say you brought some natives back with you from Chipangu. What sort of people are they? I'll let you see for yourself. Hmm? Oh. Oh. Oh, my word. Hmm. As far as I can tell, they seem to be a different race entirely from the natives of Portuguese Africa. Amazing. Mm-hmm. That is true. Let me take this opportunity to affirm once again that at no time did we set foot on any Portuguese territory in Africa, Your Highness. Please command them to describe for us the islands from whence they come. Remember what we practiced? Hmm. Very well. I just wanted to be sure he really knew what he was doing. However, Admiral... Yes? According to the official treaty between the kingdoms of Portugal and Spain, the newly discovered Chipangu automatically becomes Portuguese territory, does it not? Does it not? Your Highness, as I understand the Treaty of Alcasovas, the route around Africa and all undiscovered territories along the route belong to Portugal, but the westward route I took is as yet officially unassigned. It is my duty, indeed my solemn responsibility, to report back to Spain. Of course. And Admiral, please accept my congratulations on the success of your voyage. We shall help you with your ship's repairs and provide you with whatever else you need. You may feel free to ask Diaz for anything. You've been most kind, Your Highness. A thousand thanks. Look, that's the ship that sailed west to the Indies. Well, there you have it. The sails have all been completely replaced and the leaks in their hold have been repaired, Admiral. Thanks, Diaz. You've been a tremendous help. Well, after all, we're both sailors, aren't we? Oh, I've just remembered. There's one more piece of good news. Huh? It seems the Pinta also arrived home safely. Are you sure, Diaz? That's wonderful. Tell me, how is she and how are her crew? After the storm, she managed to limp into the port of Bayona, which is in Spanish territory, to the north of Portugal. I thank the Lord they're safe. It appears that the captain, Pinzon, I believe, had someone deliver a letter to the Spanish king and queen. I wonder if he's aware that the Nina made it back safely as well. Admiral, 
I also want to make a voyage to Chipangu one day, but I want to approach it from the east rather than from the west. Ah, you chart a course eastward. From the point you discovered, the Cape of Good Hope? Yes. Perhaps we'll both set sail one day, you westward and I eastward. And our names will go down in history. I wish you all the best, Diaz. I wish you the same, Admiral. On March 13th, we departed from Lisbon and set sail for our port of origin, Palos.